and the motor used is a permanent magnet DC motor. What way you feel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Photograph of Professor Satish Davan, who was my guru. I worked with him in 1972 to 1982, about 10 years. And he taught me anything how to design an instrument, how to do the digital simulation, how to do the image processing, how to couple digital analog simulation, so many things he was, uh, uh, he was, uh, he was teaching and he was providing knowledge source to everybody. But one thing I thought of sharing with you, all the people who are there, the teachers, senior scientists, the students, what I've learned from Professor Satish Davan, I have not come across so far any management school book or notes and he gave to me and a beautiful occasion I thought of sharing with you. You know, this is 1972. He gave me a project of design development and launching a design development of a rocket system, a four-stage rocket system with guidance, control, telemetry instrumentation, telecommand instrumentation, and radar tracking instrumentation, all together, they, they, when the satellite launch vehicle launched, it has to carry a satellite, put it in the orbit around the sun. That's the mission. When he gave it 1979, that was the first time India is attempting to become 
या या स्पेस पावर या फेमस फॉर स्पेस टेक्नोलॉजी ओनली थ्री और फोर नेशन दोस डेज दे वर रूलिंग इन दैट एरिया वन डे ही हिमसेल्फ एंड माय डायरेक्टर एंड एंड देन प्रोफेसर ही ब्रह्म प्रकाश प्रोफेसर ब्रह्म प्रकाश both of the great scientists and friends and fortunately i had an opportunity work with three great human beings that three great scientists professor vikram sarabhai professor satish kavan and professor and all these people brahm prakash all these three is a unique person so when professor satish kavan called me on 72 July 4th at Trivandrum he said i am appointing you as a project director for SLV3 you should do it in 7 year time you are the put the satellite in the orbit uh, developing a rocket system and this the mission i give the money set an amount he sanctioned i give the thousands of people who are in the center vikram sarabhai space center on any space center all of them will work for the that one single project putting a satellite in the orbit using the india designed developed rocket system now when he gave the mission to me that you have to launch you have to build design develop and launch a satellite on the vehicle at the time he felt that task is too big compared to me i felt a task bigger than me if you believe task bigger than you any task any mission you will never do it at that time i felt like that because there were many senior scientists technologists with leaders and uh, he selected me for doing this job so i felt it's a great responsibility how do i do i was nervous about the system then he gave me an advice that advice all this introduction to report to you that advice that is 1972 july he gave me that advice that advice was like this kala you know if you don't do anything if you don't do anything no problem you all agree you all agree if you don't do if you don't do anything no problem like you are a happy fellow lazy fellow but if you do a great mission that is sasi uh, davan says if you do a great mission also the same mission will great create great problems if you a challenge if you take a big mission and it will associated with that there will be big problems to be there but at no time sasi davan said the problem should not become your captain you should become the captain of the problem and defeat the problem and succeed this is the this is the great advice applicable to all the scientific community because science doesn't give you you are just a solution you do the lab experiment or you do the technology just like that it doesn't succeed there are problems and many scientists they burn the candle science has become a mission of lifetime mission and then finally they achieve so friends the message i'm giving you if you want to succeed in life four things you have to do number one first of all you should have a mission that i will be remembered for the mission what i am going to do second thing you must acquire the knowledge not just simply getting a mission or thinking i am going to do you must acquire knowledge as much as possible third thing is you have to sweat sweat means as you are sweating in this uh, in this day in this in this place now you are all sweating but by i am saying sweating by hard work and then fourth thing you should not get frightened with the problem you have to defeat the problem so this 
I would like to say I learned my guru and I learned from my experience with the missile program. I learned my experience in the in the in the Rashtrapati Bhavan. I learned my experience space program. So this is what I can say. Always you should ask yourself what I will be remembered for. Every one of you tonight you take a page or go to your computer terminal and try to ask yourself what I will be remembered for. If you give a right answer what I will be remembered for, you send me my my website www.presentofindia.nic.in Then if you send me, I will discuss with you, I will correspond with you. God bless you. <laughs> Friends, since I am in the midst of instrumentation specialist, I would like to share a special knowledge we cherish of Professor Satish Dhawan in building his own instrument when he became the professor of aeronautics department. He was the first one started building instruments for boundary layer experiments. He is an expert in the boundary layer, aerodynamic flow, subsonic flow and high subsonic flow and uh, he would like to measure the boundary layer measurements for that he designed the instruments. I have found many countries, I saw in many countries, the people who design and develop the instrument to prove their theory, they are the most successful people. Uh, today, that capability is essential. Every one of you, we today you take any hospital you go. You go any biomedical laboratories you go in the country. Ninety to ninety-five percent of the instruments coming from outside. You all have to take a challenge that at least next five years time, fifty to sixty percent of the instrumentation what we use in the medical in the medical laboratories, hospitals and research laboratories, biomedical research laboratories, we should succeed. Now what I can tell you, I, I have written to you, I have given lot of information and in my, in, my, in my lecture I have written, as soon as I finish my lecture, you can go to my website www.presentofindia.nic.in but I am not going to read all of them. But the essential thing I want to say, you can move further. The essential thing I want to say, this uh, today, I want to talk to you convergence of technology. This is going to happen in big way, convergence of technology. And this area, the academic community, the technology community, medical community uh, should be aware of it. I was in, uh, in uh, Seoul. Seoul is the capital of South Korea. There are star laboratories, star laboratories. And the star laboratories, they allowed me to visit the laboratory. When I studied it, they have developed what is called a nanorobot. <laughs> this nanorobot is convergence of three technologies. That is biotechnology, information technology and nanotechnology. The, when the convergence of three technologies, using that convergence, once you do that proper convergence, a, a nano robot comes in. This nano robot, I was witnessing the experiment. You can suppose you are the cancerous cell of a patient. You want to do a chemotherapy or you want to do the treatment. You program it and inject this nano robot in the human body. This nano robot gets in the site where there are cancerous cells and locates it and treats the cancerous cell and the nano robot gets digested in the body because it is a DNA, DNA based robot. So friends, this is, uh, this is the type of uh, uh, nano bio info when they converge it happens. Now I would like to tell you 
the nanotechnology, you would have heard about biotechnology, you would have heard about information technology. But nanotechnology, I want to tell you what is happening in the country. Because nanotechnology is going to become one of the very important fields for electronics, material science, and particularly healthcare. I would like to, now I would like to present the progress made in the nano science and technology in India, in India, through some examples. One is water. For water purification, they use nanotube filter. In healthcare, the typhoid detection kit in Gwalior, there's a laboratory, a defense laboratory, and they have developed a typhoid detection kit. Normally typhoid detection takes many weeks. These people can detect in few hours. Third is a drug delivery system. Now let me talk to you about water and nanofilter. The water purification, the scientists from Benares India, I am purposely I am talking to the universities so that you can interact. The scientists from Benares Hindu University have devised a simple method to produce carbon nanotube filters that efficiently remove micro to nanoscale contaminants from water, heavy hydrocarbons, from petroleum. Made entirely of carbon nanotubes, C and T, carbon nanotubes, the filters are manufactured using a novel method for controlling the cylindrical geometry of the structure. The work was supported in part of the Ministry of Human Resource Development and Department of Science and Technology in India. The filters are hollow carbon cylinders, several centimeters long and one or two centimeters wide with walls just one third, one half of millimeter thick. They are produced by spraying the benzene into a tube shaped quartz mold and heating the mold to 90, 900 degrees centigrade. The nanotube composition makes the filter strong, reusable and heat resistant and they can be cleaned and easily for reuse. The carbon nanotube filters offers a level of precision suitable for different applications. They can remove 25 nanometer sized polio viruses. These filters will remove polio viruses, 25 nanometer sized polio viruses from water as well as larger pathogens such as E. coli and certain type of bacteria it will filter out. The researchers believe this would make the filters adaptable to microfluidics application that separate chemicals in drug discovery. This is a classic application of the latest in science, nanoscience, water purification. If properly used, this can help in lessening the burden in our drinking water emissions leading to the availability of safe drinking water that will result in minimizing the waterborne diseases. Now let us take the health care uh, typhoid detection kit. Typhoid detection kit has been developed by DRD Gwalior, Defense Research Development Establishment Gwalior, using the nano sensor. Nano sensor has been developed by Professor A.K. Sood and his team from India Institute of Science Bangalore. Typhoid fever caused by Salmonella typhi is a major health problem and an important challenge to health authorities of third world countries including India due to unsatisfactory, unsatisfactory water supply, particularly Gwalior facing water problem, I understand, poor sanitary condition, malnutrition, emergence of antibiotic resistant strains. According to an estimate, the worldwide incidence of typhoid fever is 16 million cases annually and death rate is 6 lakhs individual per year worldwide. In India, the morbidity due to the typhoid varies from 102 to 2,219 per 100,000 population in different parts of the country. In some areas, typhoid fever is responsible for 2.5% of all deaths. In India, for routine diagnosis for typhoid diseases, Vidal test is performed with a single serum sample 
which it does not provide the correct diagnosis of infection. Therefore, a lactose acculturation based test has been developed at the DRE in Gwalior using recombinant DNA technology and the immunological technique for rapid diagnosis of typhoid infection. The test detects a stifle antigen directly in patient within one to three minutes, one to three minutes, which is very important for initiating early treatment and saving human life. A collaborative work has been carried with Professor A.K. Sooth of Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. The sensitivity of the test has been increased 30 times by applying a small electric charge, 1.5 volt. With this improvement, extreme low concentration of antigen in clinical samples can be detected. Moreover, very small quantity of clinical sample as low as 2 to 3 microliters required to perform the above test as compared to 10 to 15 microliter sample required for latest accreditation test. So it is in your city, this work being done. Next one, the power, that is gas flow induced generation of voltage from solids. Professor A.K. Su, of Professor of Physics and the Institute of Science, and the student, uh, Shankar Ghosh, has studied, experimented, and found that the liquid flow, liquid flow in carbon nanotubes can generate electric current. Liquid flow in CNT, carbon nanotube, can generate electric current. One of the most exciting applications to emerge from the discovery of this possibility of a hot pacemaker, hot pacemaker like device with nanotubes which will sit in the human body, generate power. You don't need to carry a battery with a pacemaker and generate power from blood. Instead of batteries, the device will generate power by itself to regulate defective heart rhythm. The IIC has transferred these exclusive rights of technology to an American startup, Trident uh, Metrology. They will develop the prototype and commercialize the gas flow sensors and uh, definitely this will come to India also. Now I am going to talk many of you in this game that is drug delivery system, drug delivery system. A research group headed by Professor A. Maitra of the University of Delhi Chemistry Department has developed 11 patentable technologies for improved drug delivery system using nanoparticles. Four of these process have been granted US patent. One of the important achievements of the initial stage of drug delivery research was development of a reverse micellar based process for the synthesis of hydrogen and smart hydrogen nanoparticles for encapsulating water soluble drugs. This method enabled one to synthesize hydrogen nanoparticle of size less than 100 nanometers diameter. This technology has been sold to Dabur Research Foundation in India in 1999. Another technology has been transferred to industry deals with nanoparticles, drug delivery for eye diseases. Traditionally, steroids have been used extensively in the treatment of ocular inflammatory diseases and allergies. However, prolonged use of steroids has many side effects. The Delhi University group process uses nanoparticles to encapsulate the nanostroid tracks. This process improves the bioavailability of the track on the surface of the cornea. The technology has been transferred to Chandigarh based in Panacea Biotech Limited. Now, I would like to discuss about the World Knowledge Platform. World Knowledge Platform, I have suggested that when I visited Philippines, Korea and uh, uh, Singapore, I put forth an idea. Suppose India is famous for the software products and uh, the Southeast Asian countries, suppose they are good at it hardware. Uh, we should, both of them, generate a platform, world knowledge platform, and so that we make a product cost effective and for the best product and so that it will reach uh, the various communities <coughs> in the world and uh, it become a big business. Now friends, this, uh, now the next point I would like to convey is the, now I would say that uh, what can be 
the mission for world knowledge platform it can be from energy i can be uh, from the water as i was talking to you it can be in the healthcare it can be in the food preservation knowledge products autobile hardware embedded software integration uh, gene characterization uh, stem cell research molecule to track towards the diagnostic and treatment of the diseases then herbal and natural product sharing experiences with modern bio products tourism and related services in addition to the areas convention about areas such as electronics ict and the automobile sector may also be focused especially in the areas of design development leading to production creation of, of meeting the market demands of the respective countries and also for the world market now finally i would like to say in conclusion friends in conclusion i say that uh, i would like to share uh, so far i was talking to you nano technology and its application in india and uh, how important instrumentation we should indigenously develop at least 50 to 60% this is the message i convey now for all this uh, you must have the leadership quality leadership quality when you should come when it succeed you don't need the leadership quality when a, when a person or when a project uh, get into trouble then you need the leadership quality uh, when professor satish dawan i told he gave me the project 1972 1979 we prepared for a launch from sri hari kota there is 600 parameters had be monitored in few 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 seconds because humanly it is impossible so it's automated the whole computer will do so computer went through t minus say 4 minutes and they checked they checked they said they put a computer put a hold on the slv3 1979 in uh, in august uh, 17 put a hold so i was a mission director for the character my expert behind me they advised me that if there's a problem we leak it one of the tanks pressure tank which will power the second stage and uh, it has got a sufficient uh, um, sufficient redundancy we have got 50 second flight in the second stage whereas 100 second we have got a uh, uh, power power the package so they asked me to take a decision finally i took a decision that i will launch because uh, already the whole the system is on the ignition is on propellant system is to be ignited so it's a many complex situation <coughs> as a project director as a mission director i took a decision no and then unfortunately when the first stage was called right and the, when the second stage got ignited the second stage control system there was a problem and it went into spin so it, it, it was not having a nocturnal control a lateral control a pitch control so the whole rocket system has spun it's so putting a satellite in the orbit we just uh, it said went to the bay of bengal so it was a failure so big very failure how do you manage this failure and um, on the same day 7 o'clock we launched the 8:30 the big cross press conference the international press national media electronic media and and, and the print media and all of them are there to ask questions and for satish tawar khan i was the mission director he told me I am going to handle the media. You guys come there. So I went with him. First thing he said today, we tried to launch the first satellite launch vehicle. The problem. We learned a lot. Of course, the failure. But in a year, we are going to succeed. And I am going to give all the strength to my project team, my technology team, my scientific team. In one year, we are going to succeed. But media was not convincing. They told the crowds you couldn't wear a wig or like that. Lot of criticism there. But still, he managed to convince the people that one year we sacked. 1980 came in, in July 18, and again we were the launch pad and uh, the automatic checkout computer gave the clearance for launch T0. First stage work given the required velocity. Second stage work given the velocity and third stage work velocity. and first stage the last stage igniter 
and move beyond the same, nearly 7 km per second velocity. That's the velocity you need for putting the satellites in orbit. And the whole, within a one hour we knew all the downrange stations around the world we have exported the satellite. We are very happy. The nation was very, very happy. The nation was very happy. But, but I want to tell you one thing. What happened on that day? On that day also there was a press conference. But uh, Professor Tisdawa told me, I must go, that is project director, mission director, to go and conduct the, conduct the press conference. That means, when it failed, the leader uh, took over the failure to himself. When the success came, he gave the success to his team. He said, that's real, that's real. That, that, that's a real leadership. So friends, on Professor Satish Dhawan Memorial Talk, what I can give you, that you how to manage the success, how to manage the failure. If you learn it, you have learned in your lifetime how to manage science projects, how to manage technology projects, how to manage industrial projects, how to manage political projects also you can manage, because you are very aware this problem will be there. So friends, with these words, I inaugurate the symposium with a focal theme of recent trends in biomedical instrumentation. My best wishes to the organizers and the participants of the symposium success in their mission of designing, developing and delivering cost-effective state-of-art biomedical instrumentation to the medical community. May God bless you all. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. President. Your words of wisdom are always been a source of inspiration. ITM family is blessed today.